Hey folks, Kiltman here, Kiltman at your services. How are you all? Hope you're all doing very, very well. Now, as I promised, here's the story of the hat. A little review of Kiltman's latest fashion accessory from the Wild West. Well, the, the Wild West of the Cotswolds. We'll, we'll come on to that. So yeah, I said a while ago I wanted to get a Clint Eastwood style hat from the likes of High Plains Drifter. Pale Rider, Joe Kidd. I'm playing the Lalo Schifrin score for Joe Kidd right now. Not one of Clint's best westerns by a long shot. And it's not even the most exciting of scores, but it's an interesting score by Lalo Schifrin. And it, no one ever talks about it, so I'm gonna give it some air time. Anyway, now the style of hat that he wears, you don't see Clint wearing the big snats and the big kale brim cowboy hat often. He has worn them, Coogan's Bluff, uh, Rawhide, and a few other things as well. But mainly he goes for what people always call the preacher style hat, where the brim is sort of flatter like this, almost Mormon, um, the Danites, the Mormon hit squad, the vigilantes, the executioners that they had during the 1800s to defend Mormon territory, Mormon families, but they were actually a right bunch of bastards. And even the church disowned them as well, like, and the Mormons turned against them. But the Danites used to wear these sort of flattened brim preacher hats. Think that guy in Poltergeist 2. Yeah, you know what I'm thinking now. And Clint would wear that sort of flatter brimmed hat with like either like a, a, a pecan sort of um, crown or it'd be a flat crown, flat top on it. So I wanted that kind of hat. And as I said, the minute I began looking for Clint Eastwood hats, all my social media was bombarded with fake sites and scams about Clint Eastwood style hats. And they, oh, they had great imagery and great write-ups, all cribbed from the actual original source. Now, I could name all these companies, and there's about 10, maybe 12 of them. And maybe one or two of them could be legit but the majority are pure scams. But you know, you think, who's gonna do a scam about a Clint Eastwood hat? Well, they do them for anything. They'll get it any which way they can. See what I did there? See what I did? Any which way you scam. There you go. Uh, so, I did some looking around, some more checking, and I found a company called Cotswold Hats. Have I got that right? It is Cotswold Hats, isn't it? It is Cotswold hat. It actually doesn't say on the inside. See how they took the hat off and everything's brightened up now. Look, put it on again. Hmm. You may have noticed we're in a whole new location right now. We're upstairs in the attic. We've got an attic and we have a loft. But the attic is the room where I intend to start making a lot more videos up here. We're in the process of clearing this room out. It's a big room. It goes way back beyond you. It goes way that side way that side but over the years damage water damage we've got a new roof now and it's all the leaks have all been fixed but it's still in disrepair so anyway with a big werewolf behind me and young mr kentucky fudge here who's doing his best to look like a, that little dwarf from high plains drifter is it malachi uh, with his his big top hat on and I've got me frock coat on, me Clint style frock coat. But anyway, so I found Cotswold hats um, and they do a great range of hats. Now they're not paying me to say this, I bought this bloody thing, and uh, but I love it, I think it's great. I've had it for like almost a week now and I've worn it out, I've worn it to town a couple of times. Out in a boot, drinking in the local saloons and all that. You know, the taverns and the hostelries, picking fights with people, you know, just going up to the bar and saying, whiskey. Because that's all I drink anyway, is whiskey, as you guys know. But I love it. I think it, it feels great, it looks great, and it's getting a lot of attention. Now, since I put pictures of this on social media, and I mentioned it, I think, on a video, loads of people have been asking me about it. Where'd you get the hat from? Oh, can you review the hat? Talk about the hat, tell you about the hat. Our good friend and super channel contributor, Steve007Smith. 
loves his cowboys as well as his James Bonds. And yesterday he was teetering on the brink of buying this very hat. Well, not this one, but a very similar one from the same company. And he was asking me about head sizes and all that sort of stuff. Now, I bought a medium. And I can tell you for a fact that even though I've got the uh, the Kiltman Macanini jowls, I've got a face shaped like the Millennium Vulcan, which has been picked up. A big lozenge-shaped face. And that's what all the men folk of the Macanini clan have. But we've got very small heads. So hat sizes, berets, helmets, kepis, you know, all your hats. It tends to be kind of small. But I've got a lot of hair. It's all tucked away at the back there. It's all a big man bun thing. So if I didn't have the hair, if I had a skinhead or something like that, I'd have to order small. And even then, it would probably it would probably spin round like Linda Blair's head, you know, in, a, in The Exorcist. Because my noggin is so tiny. But, uh, so I've got a medium and, um, and it fits just right. So I'll just take you on a tour around this hat. Now, as I say, this is not a Clint Eastwood style hat. It, well, it is if you flatten the brim down, which you can. And then it does look surprisingly like High Plains Drifter and Pale Rider, which is what I wanted anyway. But when you let it go, it looks very similar to the hat that um, Russell Crowe wears in the remake of Three Tens of Humour uh, by James Mangold with Christian Bale as well. And it's a good film. It's not a patch on the original film, which is actually darker and more brutal, I think, the original um, with Glenn Ford. But he wears this sort of... This hat's called the Gambler. It's a gambler style. Now, a gambler style hat is the interim hat between the dress hat and the cowboy hat. The dress hat was like a Western style bowler hat. Uh, a very sort of, very fine, you know, going up and down the Mississippi on those uh, those river boats in it, playing blackjack and all that. Uh, and you know, having a, having a gun under the table, you know, for when when you get sus for having an ace up your sleeve, you take Greedo out, don't you? You shoot first, that's what you do. But, um, and then you've got the, the big cowboy hats, the cattleman's hats and the big Stetsons, which are much broader brims and the brims are curled up. So this, as you can see, is in between. But as I say, you can flatten it down. It's got the oval crown on it with your ridge. Uh, you can manipulate these things, but I don't recommend you do it. I mean, folding the brim down, pressing that down to get give it a different look. You can do that. That's not gonna not gonna wreck not gonna wreck the house. But um, and you can bring the uh, the front down a bit. You know, for when you, man, you know, see, see what I mean? See, you've got that look, that Clint look. Now, the hat band itself is a, uh, it's decorative metal pieces put in there. Very nice they are too. That's why it gives the look of the three tens of humor with the brim curled up and with this sort of decorative headband on, hat band, it does have that Russell Crowe look to it, which is pretty neat. By the way, those same sites also offer the, the, the three tens of humor Russell Crowe hat as well. Steer clear, folks. Steer clear. But Clint's tended to have like just a very plain and tattered sort of leather hat band. That's all it was. And by the way, the, the decoration doesn't go all the way around. But and given the choice, I wouldn't have opted for that. I'd have wanted the plain. But now I've got it. Kind of like it. Show the inside, it's made in the UK. Very timely with uh, the, the coronation of the king. We've got a right royal crest with two royal lions there. Uh, medium, 57 centimeters, that says. That's, that's around your bonds, 50 cent. So Steve was asking, he was dead concerned about that because he hasn't got a lot of hair up top uh, about what kind of size. <sighs> Measure your head, folks, measure. Measure your head, get that tape measure, round your bonds, and um, and do the uh, the size scales, and you come up with the right thing. If you get a hat that's too big for you, you can get hat liners. It's easy, so don't worry about things like that. It's if it's too small. 
that's the problem. So you've got a great big fat head and you, get, and you, you buy a hat that's too small for you. It's like sitting like a pimple, you know, on the, the arse of a brontosaurus. It's gonna look a bit daft, isn't it? So, you know, but if it's too big, you can, you can, accom you can accommodate, you can um, customize. Too small, too bad. But anyway, it says 100% wool handmade. And on the other side, designed in England. Uh, now, it is 100% felt wool. Now, in this house, because I have a husky dog, as you guys know, um, anything wool is a massive dog fair magnet. And being the guy that wears a kilt every day, I'm well used to it. This frock coat is 100% wool as well. So I'm wearing a kilt, you can't see it, but I'm wearing a kilt. There you go. Woo. And um, so I'm bedecked in Siberian Husky fare anyway. So the, the jacket's covered in it. The hat has been liberally christened with Husky fare. No two ways about it. I've worn it out. I've worn it in a light smattering of rain. Now, the other day, after having such great weather, and just a, like say a light smattering of rain, which this survived perfectly well, there was an absolute deluge where I got, me and the dog got drenched, completely drenched. And I was wearing the Snake Plissken leather jacket. Now that took a good three days to dry out. Three days. I don't think I've ever been as wet in my life. Absolutely soaked through. Anyway, I don't know how that would have fared during that deluge. It would have gone all droopy. It would have been like, uh, like, that. like some kind of like, you know, cigarette selling girl in old London town with a little bonnet on. But, there we go, there we are, look at that. Fits great, doesn't it? Looks good, I like it. So it, it held off a light smattering of rain. Uh, it does attract dog fare and you will stain it. Uh, if you've got sweaty fingers, if you've been eating a bag of dry roasted nuts and then you get you put your finger across the top, you're gonna change, you're gonna stain this. I know because there's already some stains appearing on this. There's like little paler marks, but I've obviously been going like that and dicking about. So it's got like little little scuff marks, and that's what you want, folks. I've always said this: when you buy clothing, be it jackets, be it boots, be it uh a kilt, you know, no kilts, kilts should look resplendent. But I've got kilts that have been through wars, so you know, and they do look like it as well. But I always think I prefer things to look lived in. Clint's hats in these movies are battered. There's no pristine hat that he wears. They are all absolutely knackered. And that's why some it's difficult to get the exact look because they've been worn, they've been beaten, they've been dragged behind horses, trampled on by horse hooves shot at you know these hats in, in these movies are lived in and possibly died in as well so when you get your hat now i've always said about you get a leather jacket and you want it to look weathered you want it to look worn because there's nothing worse than a brand new leather jacket especially when it look like mad max or snake plissken or mccready from the thing or bane with the great which i've also got bane's jacket from the dark knight rises and my God, that's a that's an awesome bit of kit. That you can buy these things weathered, but they're weathered to a degree. If you want to weather it even more, then you start smashing leather jackets with bricks. I've discussed this all before, but you're not going to do that with it, with a hat. You're not going to do that. So the only way to get it to look weathered is to wear it, wear it out, wear it in all types of weather, wear it, wear it, wear it, and keep on handling it. So I've said in less than a week, it's already got some slight stains on it. Slight. I mean, I'll try to show you, but they probably wouldn't come across. There's just a few little scuff marks and around it. It's where I, 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 I've fingered it, you know. I'm not saying I've got big mucky fingers, because I haven't. Oh. You won't tell them about that. But you, you handle it. It's going to get stained, especially if you go into a pub and you, you've got your drink and drinks come down the side of the glass. You're going to stain the hat and it's going to look better. 
that's what I'm saying. It's going to look better. If, if these look pristine, you look like you've just, you're some kind of country and west, faux country and western sort of rock band, sort of Billy Ray Cyrus type thing, you know. Oh, with your pristine hat, your Mavericks sort of guitar style. I don't know, but I want them to look like I've just literally ridden in off the high plains and I'm in town looking for vengeance. Well, looking for whiskey and then a woman. Or a woman and then whiskey. I'll just settle for the whiskey, to be honest. And then looking for vengeance. But I want it to look like you've been through. Like, you haven't just bought it. Oh, you, oh, you've got your new hat on. Oh, look at you with your new hat. <clears throat> to be honest, everyone who's seen this has absolutely loved it. Loved it. I mean... I've gone out wearing a lot of ridiculous things. I go out in red tunics, scarlet tunics and British red coats. I've worn a Napoleon bloody hat, you know. I've worn top hats, I've worn, here, here's one. I've actually gone out in that. The helmet of King Leonidas himself, yeah. Oh. Got a little shake over there. A little shako with some, I don't know what's gone into there, but see what I mean? <sighs> Stuff interferes. But yeah, it's a great hat. It's called the Gambler from Cotswold Hats. Uh, it will set you back, I think it's about, about between 35 and 39 pound I've seen this going for. Uh, I paid, I, I think I paid about 35 pound for it. But I think there was a bit of shipping involved as well. It just took it up to about 39 quid anyway. So, um, but it's well worth it. It's comfortable. Uh, not heavy, not heavy at all. So, you know, unlike the crown on King Charles III. But with your frock coat on, looking the part, you know? Oh, yeah. I've heard of him. As you round these parts, if he is, I'm gonna find him. Then I'm gonna sit down with him. I'm gonna tell him that I shagged his mum. Way! And if he doesn't like that, well, I guess there'll be hell to pay. So there you go. There's the hat, folks. Uh, Cotswold hats. It's a gambler style. It's very. It can be manipulated to look more like the Preacher and the, the Danite look that um, Clint's characters from many of his movies uh, seem to adopt. I don't, know, I don't know why he went for that. He and Sergio Leone, uh, when they were doing the Dollars trilogy, he'd already had, uh, Ra was it Rowdy Yates, which he played in um, Rawhide with the big Stetson on. They, they clearly went for a, a different look, you know, the unshaven look. The poncho, because Clint has a penchant for the poncho, and uh, you know the jeans on and all that, and the stubble, the cigarillos, and the beaten down hat. Now the hats in the the, the dollar trilogy are different, only in that they're they're flatter on the crown, and they're brown, <laughs> flatter crown and brown. There you go. But if you want high plains drifter, pale rider. Joe Kidd, even I think, uh, and what else? What else would it be? Outlaw Josie Wales is a different hat again, because it, that that's a that's a different style altogether in in that film. Uh, different colour, different brim, different crown, uh, just different completely. But he has definitely worn this hat, this style of hat, more often than anything else in the westerns. I'm thinking Unforgiven. I think he wears a more traditional cowboy hat with a bit more of a sweep to it, a bit more you know, uh, curl up on the brim. But hey, the beauty of these things is get the one that you want, get what you think suits you. And if it doesn't suit you, make it suit you. You're in charge, remember that. But this, there's definitely a 310 to humor look about this one, I think. But either way, I like it, you can adopt it Flatten it down a little bit. That didn't work, did it? But yeah, you've got the flatter look there. 
still looks great, you know. Anyone argues with you, you know what to do. But that's the style, the gambler style. And I think it looks pretty good. Pretty down good. And with your hair down as well, well, you kind of look like something out of Guns N' Roses, but, and that's not the style I'm kind of going for, but, you know, either way, still works. So folks, there's the hat, the story of the hat, the history of the headgear. So, folks, in the meantime, this ever, mom, in between time, please keep it Celtic, keep it Celtic, and keep a, keep a lid on it. You want to get a head, get a hat. And I'm going to see you all. Leaders! I told you not to sit on me fingers.